I welcome each and every one of you, and as I do so, I must also encourage you to welcome those who are around you, your friends and your families, your neighbors, those who are far and those who are near. And as always, we are simulcasting, not just on my Facebook page, but also on Radio Biafra CHK platform in Biafra land, on our FM dial, we are on satellite, we are on Radio Biafra app, we are on various other apps as well. And we are very critically and importantly on YouTube as well. I welcome each and every one of you. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night to some of you. We are not like any other. This very broadcast is being listened to by every major government around the world. This very broadcast is being listened to attentively by those in Abuja, those shielding the very empty, corrupt, and decayed as a rock. Those in Lagos are listening. Everybody who calls him or herself anything of relevance is listening to this very broadcast. Here you shall hear the truth as always. Uncompromisingly so, I tell you. My name is Nnam Dekano. I am the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra. I am the director of Radio Biafra and also the director of Biafra Television. But above all, and by the very special grace of the Most High Elohim, Chukwokika Biama Prumi Hanina, a servant of the wonderful people of Biafra. It was not my intention to broadcast this very day, but I was compelled to do so by the events that occurred in Oba on Sunday. But before we get into that, we must pray as it is usual and customary for us to do so. We must hand over our proceedings to the Most High, to Kukika Biyama Prumi Hanina, for his abiding grace and love in our lives, and more especially, what Chukwokika Biyama is doing with IPOB. This very work that is unprecedented. Unprecedented. Let us pray. Onyen den sonne ruberi si onyo bonani anache malite no gugu si yinke ndu ama mama cha macha onye dio mi muwe kari angota nke made den ndu onya nyina kwisi ala nyini hina nyana ge faro si nana ge kaina pokeze bu bade ngozi ni hina obonani ge bonye na emogo obonani ge bonye nwara amana na omi kebe ndi anu mboko nyina kwoku gi no huru chi ana lanso gbo bia freze ndi eze buki we cheto kwa gwandu nke kwuru ni si anyi Kiwe chetan nan keden son kwan ki kurendi bo ni sini ani sini honjo we chigata azu. We wure yi wagen na eze bube dengo zine ga na potani. O bola di mbo kem pabu takwa sarandege. Anyi no na mbe o kem pabu no. O bote gire si tenan demba. O bu si tenan di o jo bonde no ni mezi. O nye mwem na chine kena. Anyi we na joge sigi ni hena gabun kendi de tuwa. Na lanso ge biafra ga biarere. O ga biya puta nye nando na aboge non wezebe bede ngozi. E ga gozi ndi nkegi. E ga gozi a IPOB nuzo puri chobu la de kandino na abambo wani ne di chiche. Hana ande fula ne bundi tulime. Kewe me gide ndege. Diki nye mre na oba o nye me ligwe. Kanye na ariogi. Na obu kwa otu waki ge siwe gozi yomo gozo. Ni hino omoge bo obla yin siwe na anata. Omoge ndi obla bo ndi ya na achi achi bundi ne nyanyen nye maka nana nke brede ngozo. Obu si tene hona nyagi ne ebre ge. Masi ki nke puriche nebe IPO bi ino. Mneji we gozi anye. Nonzo puriche. Anye we na ajage ma we neto ge. Nase ge nana nke de nso. Nanyaga aso joku. Anage aga we gajon jeman nana nke brede ngozo. 
Obu na nge bebo de la nyanyi na tukwasi obi anyi no. Obu na nge genyanyi biafra na nke meli igwani we na rogi we na etori we na jagama we na ibuli a hanso gelu. Na asi otuto na hanso pro de la yistene bige marone bige bi ise. 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 And for those of you who are just joining us, today is Wednesday, the 15th day of July in the year of our Most High Elohim 2020. The time now is exactly 11 minutes past 7 p.m. in the blessed land of Biafra, the land of the free, the land that the Almighty decreed will be inhabited by those that will bring light to Africa. And that is what we have come to do this very generation, unflinchingly and without compromise. Bring your pen and paper with you as always. The announcement was barely done an hour and a half ago. Amaka issued that. And I am saying to all of you, those of you who are dedicated that are the ones who are listening, you do not need 48 hours notice. You don't need 12 hours notice. Only a moment's notice, even if it's only two minutes, we have our people listening from right across the world. And I wholeheartedly welcome each and every one of you this very day as we proceed. I will not take much of your time any further. We are going to delve into the issues and the matters for which our minds have been exercised for the past few days. I may be able to contact some of you as we proceed, but for now I am filled with so much rage and anger within me that I do not understand even how to proceed. But we must try all the same. An invasion happened in Oba. Oba is the reason why I am coming out of my prayers in order to handle this very broadcast today. Oba, in Idemili, we are a very loyal and principled servant that serves us in the capacity of the North American representation in our DOS, Mazobi Dobienu comes from, a place that should be very proud of their position within these very efforts to restore Biafra in our lifetime. And this year, precisely, if we miss it this year, it is our fault. Mazio Bido Bienu comes from Oba, and because of him, some of the things that I would normally say about a very useless village, or should I say a town, will not apply to the people of Oba. Because even in the scriptures, we are reminded always, if you can find only one person from a place who is decent enough, perhaps the anger of the Most High will not befall them. And I'm saying maybe for the sake of Mazio Bido Bienu, we would not go as far as we had intended to go because he is from Oba and a very proud son of Oba, for that matter. Now we must proceed. An invasion took place in Oba by those serving the interest of the Janjaweed from the north. This place in Oba is where the Fulanese have a very strong footprint or should i say foothold or by is in Idemili in anambara uli is also in anambara that is where our daughters are being raped and cut into pieces we did not hear anything from the youths of Oba, if at all they are because i understand before i came on air we'll be doing our research extensively they said they belong to one cult or the other and the politician a particular politician from abuja hired them to disrupt the meeting of our women. Maybe they didn't hear from me for some days and they thought that somehow something may have happened to me and because of that, IPOB is open for the taking that anybody can come and do as they like. Little did they know that I was in a period of deep reflection and meditation and spiritual purity, as we always do here. I did not announce my absence and I wanted to see how some people would behave. And we have now seen how they have behaved. And they have behaved appallingly, awfully, all of them. Those that they claim are from Oba. Our daughters are being raped in Anambra, even in Oba itself, and being killed 
The only thing that some Oba youths decided to do, rather than attack the Fulanese who are raping their mothers and their sisters, they chose to attack our own mothers instead. On Sunday, the 12th of July, in our own land, the land of Biafra, what they have done is sacrilegious, what they have done is unpardonable, and by doing this, they have firmly identified themselves as products of the Janjaweed, and as such, they have no place in our land. Everybody who took part in that very attack will not leave to see Biafra. We will hunt you down wherever you are, and you will pay dearly for this very infringement that you have visited upon our mothers as you realize Biafra is a motherland. Our mothers and our daughters who will one day become our mothers are revered in our land. The highest court of arbitration in Biafra land is the court of Omoada women. The supreme court we have in our land is women. The people who have risen time and time again to fight oppression is our women. And as I said in years gone by, any day our mothers rise up to say they want freedom, you then you know that freedom is at hand. Now we know that they have risen up and our freedom is very close. Who are those to try to attempt something that is unattemptable? But those they claim are from our bar. In Idemili, I am disappointed. I am disheartened. I am enraged. And heaven knows I will not sleep the same way that I pursue the Janjaweed in a boy state is how we shall pursue them. The same way we come against our enemies with everything we have is how we must go against them and those in our back that took part in this very condemnable sacrilegious act. We are going to find you wherever you are and I will very much suggest to the PG of our bar, because the whole world is listening. I don't hide anything. Biafra, we will not cover up evil. We shall expose it, as I'm doing tonight. Each and every one of you that took part in this very abominable act, if your son is involved, if your relative is involved, your cousin, your brother, you must come forward to identify them by giving us their name. I am also holding responsible the youth leader in our bar, directly responsible. I'm also holding responsible the PG of that very community, the president general of our bar. God is my witness, I'm holding you responsible for what happened. Everything that you destroyed, you will pay for in full and in double fold. Those Janjaweed, the fallen that sent you to try our resolve, they have failed. They have failed very woefully. And history will remember the youths of our bar as infamously as we remember the Ifajunas of our time. I know very well that the devil will try. I am also of the opinion that darkness will do everything within its powers to cover this very light that IPOB is carrying. But they will never ever succeed. You do not know how upset I am. I am even more upset now than what happened when those vandals invaded my house on the 14th of September of 2017. And unfortunately, one of the mothers who fell victim to these agents of darkness, children of petition in Oba, was at my house the day that the Janjaweed attacked with their army and killed 28 of my men. And as a result, I lost my parents, I lost my cousin, and I lost my dog. And people in our bar allowed this nonsense to happen. And I say, if not for be the OBN, I'm telling you the truth. The name of our bar will live in infamy forever and ever. There is some stupidity happening in Anambara. And we must cut it out, and we'll cut it out imminently and immediately. You caused me to break my hibernation to come to talk to the whole world. From tonight, there will be no cult in Oba. Anybody belonging to a cult in Oba is a dead boy walking. We shall hunt you down, all of you.
and you will tell us who sent you. And then we shall also deal with the fool, or the fools, however many they are. All the vehicles destroyed, all the properties you destroyed, all our community will pay. They must pay for it. I'm not talking about months, I'm saying in weeks. I expect them to pay in full, full reparation. That in their next life, they will not give birth to rubbish. They have given birth to nonsense and we must cut out this very cancer from our society before Biafra comes. These are not the idiots who will take into Biafra land with us. As I said earlier, I am holding the Oba Youth Leader responsible. I am also holding the PG responsible and the Igwe of the community. I am holding three of you responsible. We must find those that carried out this dastardly act. Fulani attacked Oba. There was no response. They were waiting for IPOB to do something. Now you have gathered the strength to attack your own mothers. Unbelievable. We have listened. Maybe somebody from there who belongs to Ohaneze, who knows? Because we have listened to the wise counsel of our people, very eminent and respected sons and daughters of Igbo land, and I allowed us to give Ohaneze another chance to redeem itself from the ignominy in which it has fallen. This is the very last chance. But little did we know that it was now a license for some people to test our resolve by attacking our mothers, that very constituency that is so revered and sacred that nothing should happen to them. You know what became of Aboga Awosa Okoro Awosa? He didn't must stay it when he dared to lay his filthy hands on our mothers. The same thing shall befall Oba Youths, all of them. Bar none. As I said, from tonight, there will be no more any cult in Oba. Anybody, if we catch you belonging to a cult, you are dead. From tonight, in Oba. If you are a parent, a father, or a mother, and your child is in a cult in Oba, then from tonight, count yourself as somebody who is childless. Because that child, I don't know how you conceived them. Maybe as a mother, you must have slept with a full and a ginger weed and given birth to rubbish. Because only, only a complete idiot can ever rise up to lay their hands on our mothers. It has never happened in our history before. And our by is going to pay a very bitter price for this nonsense. It seems to full and people own Oba. You attack our mothers in our, in our land, in Biafra land. As we are planning how to defend you against the Janjaweed, we have been dying defending you. And you have the temerity to rise against our mothers. You are finished, all of you. All of you. I don't think that this is like Ohanese, that people will come from the back to plead and will rescind it. We will rescind it. Never. Until you tell us the fallen man that fathered you or those that sent you. As I said, if not for be there will be any, or bar will be completely vilified and removed from our thinking, insofar as this restoration is concerned. There will be no more cult in Oba. If you are a mother and you gave birth to one of the criminals that attacked our mothers, we are disappointed in you. I am disappointed in you. Those that sponsored this very attack, we shall find, or ask the zoo government how they are finding it with us. Talk less of a bunch of idiots, a bunch of reprobates in Oba. I want Amaka to publish some of the videos of the destruction that they brought into our land. You don't have the strength to fight, Fulani. You leave that to IPOB to do, to defend you and to save you. And we are being killed in the process. And all you can do is to attack our own mothers. You don't know what a mother means in our land? Do you know that as a child, as an adolescent, if you see your mother naked, you will go blind. Are you aware of that? Some of you don't know these things because you grew up in the township and you grew up on the flyover. You didn't grow up in the village. Where I come from, 
if you if you willfully and consciously look at the nakedness of your mother not by accident you will go blind go and ask that is who we are that is how sacred our mothers are and if a village is very bad as my village was in many years gone by our mothers will come out in the night with mpalaka with lantern mpalaka and they walk about the village naked if you say if you say to a man you will come out if you come out you will go blind that same night go and ask they use their staff Mbo, and they'll be hitting it on the ground as they are marching in the middle of 12 midnight that is why i say sometimes that people who didn't grow up in the village i have no regard for them because they know nothing our mothers will come out in the middle of the night in the middle of the night to march anywhere there is evil and evil will flee these are the women that you did not fear you rose up. Do you know the reason why I forgave Ohaneze and prepared to give him another chance? Because they brought very prominent and eminent Igbo mothers and daughters to talk to me. Are you aware of that? Do you think it was the men that did it? Of course. My brother tried his very best. Ngozi. And a man that I respect very much, Abaribe. And of course, our own elder. a man that I call a father. Apart from them, our daughters pleaded. And one of them shed tears and brought tears to my eyes as well when she was talking to me. And I said to her, that maybe that was why they sent you because they now never say no to you. And that was why I forgave Ohaneze and said, if they are serious, we can now walk together once again. That wasn't a license to attack our own mothers. If not for the mothers that pleaded with me, Wodo would have been stoned wherever we find him. But I said no, that that very order is rescinded because our mothers pleaded with me. Those are the same mothers you went and attacked in Oba. I'm telling you the truth. And Oba will pay dearly for this. That very rage and anger I have towards Fulani Janjaweed, I am going to direct to all of you in Oba. That say you are in a cult. You saw a woman with two piece wrapper. Do you know what it means to tie two piece wrapper? And you attacked them. I'm telling you the truth. Anyway, the order has been given. I feel sorry for those of you in Oba that claim you belong to a cult. The Igwe of that very town, the PG of that very town, and the youth leader. As I said, I am giving you only five days. You will produce those responsible and you will settle every bill of every damage you ever did. Don't do it and then you will know. That thing that the zoo is feeling from me, you will feel it. As you all know, I am destructively stubborn. Stubborn to the point of destruction. And Oba is going to witness something that they have never seen before. They must be very careful. These are the people that their fathers were part of the Python dance. Part of it. Part of Python dance. You came to kill those who are fighting for you, but those who are killing you cannot fight them back. They are the ones that went to announce that they are having a meeting with a pastor to kill me. And Maka, please also post that. I won't be shocked or surprised if the priest is actually from Oba as well. Who knows? I want to play something for some of you to understand. And I want Amaka to also put it on my page. It was played in a program anchored by Simon Ekba, who, by the way, is doing a very fantastic job. Very fantastic job. And I commend him for the job that he's doing. I want you to go and listen to a clip that he played in one of his programs. I never wish anybody evil. Only those that wish Biafra evil will I wish you evil a hundredfold. But somebody went on air to say that they would like to see me killed. These are the type of people who are in Oba that cannot fight the enemy, 
but to seek to kill those who are fighting for them. These are the people that write or have written to every government of the world, telling them that IPOB, these are Igbo Biafrans, telling them that IPOB is a terrorist organization, Igbo people, living in Lagos and in Abuja. These are the things that I want you to understand. Maybe tomorrow now, if they fall into any mishap, people will say, oh, but why? But there they are planning how to kill me and how to kill senior IPOB officers. And I want you to listen to what they have said. I am intending to play. Now listen. 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 That Namde Kano should be killed. This is somebody, they say his name is Tony Nade. That he was discussing with a priest. A priest. And amongst themselves, they agreed that the best thing to do is to kill me and to kill senior IPOB officers. He's an Igbo man. By the way, he lives in Lagos, where he's an errand boy for the caliphate through his master in Lagos. Have I ever come out to say that this young man should be killed? Do I have issues with him? The answer is no. But they are having meetings, having telephone conversations, and saying that I should be killed. Because I understand that with great power comes even greater responsibility. I also know that my position as the leader of IPOB, the largest mass movement in the whole world, is by divine providence. I did not place myself here. Elohim decreed that I should be here. And there is nothing any mortal can do to me. That is number one, a very critical fact that they must take into consideration. Now, as they are busy planning to kill IPOB officers, let me remind you as to what IPOB officers is doing for those whose lives are in danger in the zoo. Don't take my word for it. Amaka, please find it and post it if you can. The headline is by the cable news. Biafra Christians being killed. IPOB asks U.S. government to appoint special envoy on Nigeria. This news broke today. And everybody right around the whole world, every notable senator, as I said, in America, is aware of our campaign. And these are the people that some idiots want to be killed. Do you understand? Now you can now understand that they are, they are working for the Janjaweed, for the Caliphate. As we are asking for the U.S. government to do the needful by bringing or appointing a special envoy to the Lechard region, because of the killing of people, not just Biafrans, but right across the board, as we shall discover later on. Somebody, an Igbo man, is busy writing governments of the world, asking them not to allow me to visit their country, pleading with them to designate IPOB a terrorist movement, and without provocation, asking or planning with a priest to kill me and to kill IPOB leading officers. A priest who has not fought against the killing of Christians. It is IPOB who is spending their money fighting. Let me read this news for you because it's broke in the US as well. It's a syndicated news. Reuters carried it. So by virtue, every self-respecting media ought to carry it as well. And cable it says here, a group of coordinators of the indigenous people of Biafra in the USA, a group of coordinators numbering over 30, according to states in America, lobbied and petitioned their respective political leaders in a letter we sent to the U.S. Secretary of State drawing the attention to the plight of Biafran Christians, including those in Oba that went to attack our mothers. I want you to understand the stupidity of our people sometimes. They went to attack the mothers, those who are fighting, and they gave birth 
to our people in the USA who are at this very day, because of them and the work that they have done, the US government understand our plight as a people and also, of course, seriously considering doing something about it. These are the people that somebody wants to be killed. Now, what is it that our leaders have done that you want them killed? You want them killed because they want what the Fulani jihadists are doing to Christians to stop? That is why a human being will go and plan with a pastor. Do you see why? Sometimes when we speak, they say we're against pastors. No, we are not. Can you now understand it? A pastor is planning to kill those lobbying the U.S. government to intervene to stop the further slaughtering of Christians. Do you see how they reason? And when I say it's because they're black people, some people misunderstand me. Now, do you see it? Now, this man came out, open, not I wouldn't say openly, in a private recorded conversation and said that they want me to be killed. If tomorrow now I give the order and he's killed, people will say I'm a bad person. But as I said earlier, with great power comes even greater responsibility. As the leader of IPUB, I am a very powerful man. I know that very well. I can decide who lives or who dies. I can decide to play God if I want to. I have over two million men under my command. I can destroy anywhere I want to have destroyed. But I, first and foremost, I know that I am serving the people. I am not here out of my own volition. I'm not here to serve myself, but to serve the people. That is my number one priority and consideration in life. Another thing that we have come to do is to preserve life and limb, to ensure that their friends are alive, to see the promise of God upon their lives, which is a new sovereign Biafra nation under the sun. That's all we are doing. Not to come to kill people. That is not why we are here. If killing is what we are here for, I will order men to go into the bushes. Highest them will fight for only three years and Biafra will come. I resisted that temptation. Despite the goading of many people, I said, no, I will not do it. I will not go into armed conflict. That Chukwu Kikabiyama said Biafra will come in our time. That our destruction of the zoo, the damnable zoological republic, will come by simply speaking the truth and being brave enough to stand up to speak that very truth. And that is what we have done. That is what we have done. And must continue to do. Now listen, in a letter to, the, to Mike Pompeo, these people writing against IPOB and yapping rubbish every day, they have never done such in their whole life. But they want to claim credit for it. IPOB wrote to Mike Pompeo, the Secretary of State, drawing his attention to what is happening or what has been happening and will continue to happen unless there is an urgent intervention by the U.S. government. Now, these are from IPOB coordinators across the United States of America. Under my command and leadership. And these are the people that some individuals, rather than planning how to save themselves from the impending Janjaweed doom that is bound to come, they are busy planning how to kill us. Now you know who is working for who. And it's not me, I'm not giving any order. But you know what to do. When somebody openly can boast that they are planning to kill you, if you keep quiet, then it is your fault. Now you know who they are and you know what they represent. And I'm sure that IPOB, I'm not supposed to tell you anything. You know what to do. But he can never come to Biafra land again and he knows that. He knows that. You know he can never come there. These are the same people like the Dios in Oba, who without provocation, every time they write their petition, every time to governments of the world, begging white people to designate their own brothers and sisters as terrorists. This is the height of their reasoning capacity. But my happiness is that they are only better minority, insignificant minority, including the idiots in Oba. 
and we shall find them. And you will hear their story. And when you hear that story, and you begin to be revolved by the severity of our punishment against them, I want you to remember this very broadcast tonight about the very abominable and sacrilegious deed that they carried out against our mothers. You can do anything to us. Don't touch our mothers. You even saw what happened in Owere when Abora was tried it. Even those you never expected to speak up, they rose up and they spoke because our mothers were involved. You don't play with them. Our women are sacred. Nebi. Some of those idiots, you know, but if at all they have Biafran blood in them, if at all they have Igbo blood in them, there is no way they could have behaved in such a manner. It's impossible. It's impossible. Now I want you to understand this. These fools must never underestimate us. If I do, I never went scot free. And neither will these criminals. They won't. I promise you that they won't. If IPOB can cripple the zoo, if governments of the world are afraid of IPOB, who are these people? Who are they? I ask. How much are these people worth? People who are fathered by Fulani Janjaweed in Oba. I am ashamed of that very place. This Lagos based lunatic threatening my life and that of IPOB, high command. I hope he's prepared. Mboge Suba. That nobody said we did not warn them. You underestimate us at your own peril. Ask the zoo and I will tell you. We have reconciled with Ohaneze, yes. As I said, our mothers spoke to me. Our fathers also did. People that I respect and value very much spoke to me and we listened and we said from today, no more hostilities, but they cannot afford to be foolish anymore. And I'm sure they got that very message loud and clear. We are not against anybody. We want our land to be free. If you want to be a slave, you pack up your things and you go to Sokoto. That's entirely your prerogative. But to see it in Biafra land, pontificating for the fordrance of Fulani conquest in our land, you are dreaming. You are dreaming. You are dreaming. All of you, fathered by the ginger weed, you are all dreamers, all of you. I want the Fulani Caliphate. For those who underestimate how powerful we are, or for some of you who are driven by jealousy, greed, and envy. The same thing that the zoo tried. When we started and I was arrested, they said, oh, leave them. They are miscreants. They are touts. They are nothing. Until we blocked Head Bridge for four days. Until we rallied, until people trekked all the way from Ebanke Abo. People walked on the road for nearly six days to go to Enugu to go and do a rally calling for my release, until our mothers in Akwa Ibom, our mothers in Ikotek, and then they rose up to protest and say, I must be released. Until our mothers in Bayelsa, at a, call, at a place called Mbama River, where they were attacked by the zoo army, said, I must be released. Until Avengers said, I must be released. Yes, Niger Delta Avengers, they said, I must, Nam the Kano must be released. Until a ship was commandeered and hijacked in the high seas, calling for my release. That is to tell you how mighty we are, not through any powers that we possess, but through the grace of the Most High. We dealt with the zoo. Every time they dismissed us, oh, leave them, they are nothing. Because as they say, where we come from, that is what IPOB is. We put out the flame. That little pot, that tiny pot that you're looking at and saying you can't do anything. 
We know what the zoo is doing. They rent people, they hire them, they open Facebook for them, they give them Biafran sounding names to be talking rubbish. We know them, and you can't stop them because the companies are in Israel, they are in Russia, and they are also in Germany. They have written a very complex algorithm. All they need to do is for a computer to churn out all these names, give them IDs, and then unleash them on unsuspecting people. But thankfully, we are savvy enough. Thankfully, we are educated enough. Thankfully, we are knowledgeable enough. And thankfully, we are enlightened enough to understand their antics and their gimmicks. We know that very, very well. You know that the Janjaweed, the saboteurs in our midst, they have no shame. They have no shame. Hadekakwana. There is no shame. You know a prostitute can hold you in the public. You to pay her or him, as a matter of fact. You are aware of that, don't you? Do they have any shame? They have no shame. The same thing with the Sabo. Sabo has no shame. Because they have sold their worth. They are worth nothing. They have no shame. Even when you catch them lying, they have no shame. And these are the people in our but I gave birth to rubbish that attacked our mothers. And we can never, ever forgive them. I want the zoo to release Ojos Okal on the Lisametu. They said no. Until they saw the handwriting on the wall, they hastily released Ojos Okal. But they will not release Olisametu because Olisametu is an intellectual. He is learned, he's well read. And he was brave enough to criticize the dead Buhari, the dead one that died 27th of January. 2017. The dead, old, dead Buhari, Olisametu criticized him with facts and with figures. He swore that Olisametu will rot in jail, and they brought a Biafran man, Abang is his name, to jail his own brother. That's how foolish they are. But in the same zoo, you have Janjawi, the Fulani Caliphate judges, saying, no, they will not try their own people, they will not jail them. But they managed to rustle up an idiot like Abang to jail Ulisametu. And tomorrow somebody will say he is a man of the law or he is a jurist. We shall get to him later on. The hastily released audience of Carlo be refused to extend, extend the same to Ulisametu. I want to let people who are following the events in the zoo to understand that this is only just, it's just the beginning. We've not even started. The entire system of the zoo is crumbling this year. I didn't say next year, I said this year, it's crumbling this year. We don't have the finest lobbyists in the world for nothing. IPOB cannot be spending over $100,000 paying top-notch consultancy firms across three continents, and you think will not produce any result. Do we look foolish to you? I'm asking for an do when you think about IPOB and the NAM, the can and what we represent, do we actually look that foolish to you? Do you think I will come and I will authorize the payment of over $100,000 every month to consultancy firms all over the world and there will be no result? Is that what you think? This is only just the beginning. Every comment I make, every statement I issue, every word I utter is backed up with action. Some of this action you can see. But some of them you cannot see. A sizable, or should I say, significant proportion of what we do, you cannot see it. But it is very, very deadly. And the zoo is feeling the heat. That is why everybody is on the run, and that is why there is no president, no vice, nobody in charge of the government. He's just running on autopilot of corruption. You know, when you enter into a ship, you have a captain. If you enter into a vehicle, you have a driver. If you enter into an aircraft, you have a pilot. The only thing driving the zoo called Nigeria, Niger area, is corruption. Corruption is the main driver. Is the principal driver moving the zoo forward. And all the Sabo and their agents will be identified one after the other. And they will be dealt with. And when the time comes, don't beg. 
Because it's only a matter of time we'll catch them. Now, those who doubt the potency of what we are doing, our agitation, our quest for freedom, listen to those uh, from the Janjaweed territory that are actually a bit reasonable, like the Sultan of Sokoto. Do you know what he said? Things are no longer the same way they used to be. It's a headline for your information. The Sultan of Sokoto and the President General of um, all Muslims in the zoo Nigeria, including Yoruba people, he is the leader, has said that Nigeria is no longer the way it used to be in the past. He said it is due to population explosion because he understands. He is sending his fellow Janja with a coded message. But are you more populous than India that is doing very well? The answer is no. The second most successful country in the world, both militarily and economically, is China. And they have the largest population in the world. So only somebody of very limited understanding, or should I say warped educational background, will come out to argue that somehow having a large number of people within your geopolitical space somehow predisposes you to a life of ignominy and poverty. Pure nonsense, but at least he knows that things are no longer the same. But he couldn't bring himself to say it is because of IPOB. He said it is because of, explo of exploding population. Are you more populous than India? Are you more populous than Indonesia? Are you more populous than China? Do you have more people than Brazil? Do you even have more people than the USA? The answer to all that is no. Where did you get these very almost, you know, unbelievable narrative that your population is your problem? Well, of course it's not. He couldn't bring himself to say this because of IPOB. They understand the mess they are in, and they are looking for a way to get out of it. Because they are criminals. All of them are, and we are doing the best we can to expose all of them, one after the other, without mercy. Without mercy. Have you heard what is happening to Magu? All of you, you know this. Do you know some of them have gone as far as saying, that Nam the Khan is responsible for, of course, we are responsible. I told you, you can never have peace in the zoo. I took, give me a simple referendum, and you said, No, we won't give you, you won't do anything. It's nothing. Oh, God, I said to him, They tried that and it didn't work. They brought their bags of money two times. I said, No, I won't take it. They took it to my parents. My parents said, No, they won't take it. We are unbuyable. You cannot buy us, and they know this very well. That is why they have resorted. Uh, to assassination attempts and it didn't work. Now they feel that grooming some idiots in our land to become professional Janjaweed agents will somehow help them. They have failed and will continue to fail. The only driving factor in the zoo right now, the president of the zoo called Nigeria is corruption. Their vice president is corruption. Their EFCC is corruption. If you ask them now, who is the president of Nigeria? The answer is very simple. The president of Nigeria is corruption. The army stole all the money allocated for the fighting of insurgency and terrorism. Hushibajo took all the money belonging to trader money. Isa Funtua took his own. Aisha Buhari's son, Yusuf, Buhari is the fourth richest man in Africa. Everywhere is reeking with corruption. The only thing that propels them forward is corruption. And where there is an absence of corruption, you have idiocy fueled by envy and jealousy. What is now happening to them? And I want to bring up a news for you written by Arawa Gazette. Dot com. <laughs> they don't know who we are. The thing, when I warned, one of our sisters wrote earlier today and mentioned the date that I broadcast about putting Magu into trouble, I told Magu, if you don't release Oli Sametu, 
you'll be gone. What is happening to him today? I, there was a broadcast that I made, and some of you have it. Go and listen to it again. Go back and listen to it. I told Magu, release your Lisa Metu. If you don't release him, you'll be gone. And they have held on to him. Magu is gone. The next person to go down will be Issa Funtua. You know, the real, the real cabal. Those that held the presidency of Abakiari together. They are all going down. Somebody should translate this in Awasa to Fulani Janjawit so they understand who we are. You are not going to stop us. Nobody can. We are unbreakable. We are unbribable. What are you going to do to us? This very juggernaut that is IPOB is marching forward. If you stand in front of us, we'll crush you. And we'll continue. Today, what is happening? I will read the headline for you. How the Fulani Mafia, these is people you call the cabal, those that want one Nigeria, don't break Nigeria, let Nigeria be one. They went to CBN and they stole in broad daylight 17 billion. In broad daylight. I want Amaka, look for that picture or anybody who has it, look for that picture of Emir Fele serving tea to Funtua so people will understand who I'm talking about. Emir Fele was seen serving tea CBN governor serving tea to people that will give him orders. Bring money and he'll bring it. <laughs> now listen very carefully. Under the fraudulent direction and guidance of the governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, a man, Janjaweed, very poorly educated, can hardly string two sentences together. This Maila is Funtua, the real cabal. And his son, Abu Bakr Issa Funtua, acquired a Magic Marcus Telecom Services Limited 9 Mobile. You know it is a lot. They now own it. This is why they want one Nigeria. Because some of you are too blind and too foolish. You cannot see. Unanaga Hunzo, you cannot see. You are blind. As they are stealing us dry, impoverishing us, as we are drinking from the same creek where we go to toilet, where we bathe as we are suffering and dying of untold diseases. All they need to wave is green, white, green, and one Nigeria, and they are stealing everybody dry. And all of you are none the wiser for it. Now, do you understand why they want one Nigeria? Why wouldn't Fulani Janjaweed want one Nigeria when they can walk into a central bank and steal as much money as possible? Nobody is going to investigate them. They are the police. They are the army. They are the customs. They are the EFCC. They are everything, including even fire brigade. Do you see why they want one Nigeria? Do you see how they are playing with our brains? Do you see how clever they are? People that move cattle from place to place in the national from, from place to place. Do you see how they are messing everybody up? These very people that have never done a day's hard work in their entire life, the Funtuas and most of them in the Janjaweed Sahel North, they now bought a Tisalat. They did not even meet the conditions set by the National uh, Telecommunications Agency or whatever crap they call it, their NCC. Where did they get the money from? Ask them. The full energy. Those that want Nigeria. We want Nigeria. Let nothing break us. We want to be one. Ask them, what is your contribution? Some of you belong to groups and to, and to clubs and associations. Some of you belong to maybe to recreational clubs or even Rotary Club, for instance. Or even meet no more you know, meet, you know, village meetings. If you don't contribute to that village meeting, what happens to you? Are you not expelled? Ordinary village meeting. If you are a member of the Rotary Club and you have not paid, what happened? What do they do to you? The same thing applies in a country. People pay taxes in order to sustain their nation or their country. Everybody pays. But not the full and the janja. We didn't stay they still. Even when you go and you buy a bottle of beer, a bottle of Heineken, a bottle of Hero beer, a bottle of um, Gouda, a bottle of Stout, they say it is haram. It's a sin. They collect the, v the VAT, the value added tax. Who collects it? 
He's a junkie weed who doesn't believe in alcohol, in consuming alcohol. Customs boss. He collects the money and where did they send it to? They send it to the north. And when you see this level of injustice, when you see this level of blatant daylight robbery, when you see this level of stinking hypocrisy, and you stand up the next day, and you say that you are part of one Nigeria, then tell me how anybody could conceivably refer to you or consider you as a sensible being. It is not possible. That is how they make their money in the north. They go to central bank and they collect money. Publish that very picture of Emir Fele, the current CBN governor, serving tea to a Janjaweed because he wants to retain his political position. Those are the people that for them who are planning to eliminate us, to kill us, are emulating. They want to show their full name Janja with masters that they are very good at what they do. Including the idiots in Oba. That was why they said that Namdekanu is responsible for the I am not responsible for anything. I just uh, we will continue to point out the flaws in the zoo and the places we can reach, most of you can never reach there. Never. If I write a petition and say I want Pompeo to see it, he will see it. If I write a petition and say I want Angela Merkel to see this, Angela Merkel will see it because we have people who are working for us and we are paying them handsomely for it. Now you understand. Some of you don't know this, but we are telling you. That's why the world media is running all over, all over the place trying to interview me. Do you know why? Because they said it's a conflict of interest. No, I won't go into details anywhere. Now, you'll read about it very soon. They said here, Nam the Khan responsible for the arrest of Magu. Reports every Nigerian activity to the international community. One want to report it. Everything they do, the whole world knows. As I said, let COVID-19 come to an end. It is almost coming to an end. <laughs> Then I thought, hey, zoo, now. we'll open the package we have for the zoo. <laughs> and some of you will say, oh, but he warned us, he told us. Those of you then that will, will feign surprise, some of you will feign, I mean, by feigning, I mean F E I G N, you pretend you don't know. Our people will very cleverly refer you to a broadcast where I announced it before time. The more you hold on to Lisa Metu, the more all of you will go down. You are all going down. I begged you and I said, give Olisa Metu to me. He's done nothing wrong. The man who gave Olisa Metu the 400 million to work for his work as the, as the was it, publicity secretary for, 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 for PDP campaign is in his house with over two billion dollars missing. Colonel Dasuki. It was Dasuki that gave money to Lisa Metu. 400 million. Chicken change that some of their girlfriends spend in one weekend in Dubai. Because of that, you took Lisa Metu away from his family. Took him away from his wife and his children. We are asked, there is no, there is no Fulani Muslim who is in jail. And you want me to keep quiet. I think you are dreaming. All of you are going down. All of you. you are, oh, I'm telling you the truth. You are going down. I asked you, release your Lisa Metu. You said no. At least you listened. You left our mother, Patience Jonathan, alone. Now, at least you left Alison Mate, uh, 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 Desiane. Mate, you left her alone. You left all Jews or Carlo, yes. I commend you for that. But I also wanted to set free Olisa Metu. From Magu, all of you is, all of you are going down. You're all going down. All of you, I'm telling you the truth. And the longer you hold on to Metu, the worse for everybody. We have long leg, IPOB. There is no major continent of the world that we are not in. Not just as a, the people telling you about IPOB and what is happening in the zoo are your fellow white people. So you can't say no to them. Now you understand. Now you understand how serious we are. Today, the whole world knows that 
Magu is the most corrupt. As I told the world how he helped Tabak Yaritu, I told you live on air, I told you here on Radio Biafra, that any time I am under this microphone or behind it, so to speak, everything I speak is divine. Every word that I utter has weight. The whole, as I'm talking to you right now, every major intelligence agency in the world, they are listening. Professors in Argentina, they are listening. Learned people in Europe, they are listening. Tonight, they know that Oba is the home of the new breed of, <laughs> of Janja weed fathered uh, Sabo in our land. And that we are going to cure them of their illness and their disease. I said it many, many times that even Magu was more, Magu is more corrupt than even Ibrahim Lamode, the former one. These are guys that stole billions of dollars, not useless, worthless Naira. Naira is rubbish. Naira is, is, uh, uh, has less value than a tissue paper. Naira is nothing. Even Sefa is stronger than Naira. Every currency in the world is stronger than Naira. Ordinary Kotonu Kotonu has a stronger currency than the zoo does. We are destroying the zoo piece, taking it apart piece by piece, so that when you look, you will see nothing. All you see is corruption. Who are the people in charge of the zoo? They cannot meet the mask wearer in Asorok. They cannot meet the idiot. He himself is corruption. Aisha's boyfriend. Aisha, you look at her. You remember Halle Button. Corruption. Where is Yoshibajo? Corruption. He's on the run. Where is um, Buratai? Corruption. He's on the run. So, so who is good? And the answer is nobody. That is why the zoo must fall. Now you understand it? Listen very, very carefully. On Radio Biafra, I have repeatedly said that if they fail to release Oju Zokalo and Olisamidu, that we will no longer be discussing corruption. Uh, fight again. That EFCC itself will fall. Has it not fallen? Has EFCC not fallen? Did I not say it? Anybody I curse is cursed. Once I condemn you, you're finished. Ask the Sabo, those that tried to take over power when I was in prison because I valued them, thought they were doing what we all swore to do, as soon as I went into prison, they started to connive to take over power. Where are they today? Because I cursed them. And they will never have peace. I won't touch them. I won't harm them. But they will never have peace. Today they are worthless. Absolutely worthless. That is who we are. Do you know why? Because our hands are clean. When we say we are whiter than white and whiter than snow, people don't understand what it means. Now they do. Do you know why? Because anything we touch, we have the Midas touch. Anything we touch turns into gold. Everything we touch. Today, everywhere the zoo is around the world, every major country, we are checkmating them. Hundred, no more lies. We are checkmating them. And now the world understands that the face of corruption is the zoological republic of Nigeria. They know. So Magu is a small fish. You see that guy they call Malami? Your AGF or ACF. He too is going down. All of them will go down. All of them. Down to the dust. Next time when they hear IPOB in Namdekan Radio Biafra, they will take cover. This is something I want our people to understand. <laughs> this is something that I want them to understand. To appreciate how determined we are. That we are not going to go back. Impossible. Even northerners, houses are now writing. Because house people are in trouble. They too are now complaining. The time is precisely 10 minutes past. 8 p.m. We are live and we are direct. If you look at your clock right now, it is 10 minutes past the top of the hour. That's how you know that we are live and we are direct. And to add to that, that humanity is listening. I want to bring you another news, not from uh, I, any of IPOBs. Um, all the news are all independent. You know what they said? 
We are keenly monitoring Magus probe, US, UK, France, UAE, and others. This is the way we work. This is how we operate. Every, everything they do, everything a Fulani person does, Janjawi, because they are the most corrupt. They are the most corrupt. They even corrupted Osibajo. They are the most corrupt people on this earth. Every corruption, I can assure you, as soon as our people from the inside, our intelligence services, the M branch, as soon as they get us the information, we are part, some of them we don't announce. We are passing them on to the whole world. Do you know why we do it? So that when they call all these their phony meetings, these their fraudulent meetings with their partners in crime, most of them in US, in UK, in France, they'll simply ask them, oh, what is your name again? Oh, my name is Isa Funtua. You know what they do? They go back to the dossier supplied by IPOB and said, oh, you stole such amount of money at this date, at this time. They shut up. That is why even after COVID-19, most of them won't be traveling anymore. Because some of them will be arrested if they travel to Europe. Yes, they, of course they will. <laughs> now you know. Some of you don't understand the implications of the executive order signed by Trump. Now you know the value of it. We are now watching. Because we know that the Fulani Janjaweed, they have no handiwork in life. The only job in life is presidency to control the army. Anywhere there is sizable money coming in or budgeted for something, Fulani Janjaweed is there. And uh, taking down the zoo with them. It is here. Countries like the USA, the UK, I am reading from a zoo publication. Countries like the USA, the UK, France, UAE, and some others have shown deep interest in the probe of Magu. Why do you think so? They are holding on to Lisa Mitu. Okay, keep holding him now. All of you will go down. Keep holding on to him. But if you have sense, you release him. And I told you before, I said, if you release Lisa Mitu, I will no longer talk about this issue. That's what I told you. As the same thing with Audio Zakal, I told you, I will not discuss it and have not. Release your list, I will keep quiet. You can steal from the zoo as much as you like. That is your business. But as long as your list, is in Kuja, waking up in Kuja, sleeping in prison, when corrupt Fulani people are in their homes in Dubai, some of them down with coronavirus, enjoying life, with their children driving uh, baby Bentley. No, no, it's not fair. I won't allow that. I can't allow it. And they know I won't. All of you are going down. So the same way you underestimated IPOB before in 2015 when I was arrested is how you will ignore and underestimate. Keep holding on to Elisa Metu and you see what will happen to you. All of you are going down. Are we going to stop anytime soon? Of course not. And some of them are wondering, oh, where did they get all their money from? Where from where? Because Chukwu Kikabiyama is in charge. If you calculate all the money that IPOB contributes every month, it's not up to what we spend. And you can never know where we get our funding from. Never in this life. And every fund we raise goes towards fighting for this freedom. And fighting for every Biafran. Including even those that were not part of us. Those that followed party politics and rejected what we are doing. Like Oli Sametu, we will fight for him. He said we will fight for Jesus Carl. So you don't know that? You think we will abandon our own? So you will take? Whereas your own is enjoying and you allow our own to be taken, we will not allow it. Never, not IPOB, we won't allow it. Never, ever, ever. <clears throat> they, they don't know what, what they are in for. And also, as I said before, I said that the face of the zoo is corruption. Was uh, Buhari corrupt before he died? The answer is yes. <laughs> Was a Sibajo corrupt or is he corrupt now? The answer is also yes. Because a company in which this is a man that told one Nigeria, let's move the nation forward to the next level. Let's build Nigeria. Let's make it great. Talking rubbish. Behind the back, they are stealing. Let me tell you something that people don't understand about we black African people. You think because you control a budget of $1 billion, you're entitled to $800 million of it. No, you're not. Do you know that if I had the, the, the mindset or the nature of a Wazurike, I would be a property tycoon maybe now challenging Donald Trump in terms of ownership of properties around the world. But I have none. I don't have any need for it. Because the only reward I want in my life is that Biafra is free. That's all. 
Not material work on a bank or what is is rubbish. Imagine if I invest one hundred thousand dollars over that we spend every month on those working for us, making sure that the zoo is in trouble every blessed day. Imagine if I decide to buy a property every blessed month. Do you know how many properties I will have today? Do you know how many landed properties I will have today? If I were to spend a hundred thousand on myself and in the acquisition of properties every month. People were before doubting how much we spend. And some of them went to United States Department of Justice. And they saw the contract that we signed with this firm. And we really can't lie in America. Any money you pay them, they account to, the, to, the, to Uncle Sam. The inland revenue in America, they know. So if you want to know how much we pay people working for us in America, go to write to U.S. Inland Revenue or go to Department of Justice and do what is called Freedom of Information Request. They will tell you how much we pay. It's not hidden. It is an open, civilized society. That will tell you all you need to know. <laughs> Osibajo is no longer a vice president. Hey, let's make Nigeria one trade that money. <laughs> Osibajo has a stake in a company called Simon Scoopers Partners. <laughs> he has a link to another firm, Ocean Trust Limited. <laughs> they have uh, quietly stolen, how much did they steal? 100 billion naira. It's a scam. <laughs> Odu, they call it in Yoruba language. So when you see them coming, oh, one Nigeria. let's make Nigeria one. We are the glue holding Nigeria one. You are the glue holding corruption together. The only good thing about Nigeria is corruption. And a few people are benefiting whilst most of you are dying in poverty, in penury, in hunger, and in disease. And you keep quiet. And when you see those who are fighting to make your lives better, you go and attack their mothers. You people are without conscience. Now you know the difference between white people and black. Some people say, oh, but please don't insult black people, but look at the way you're behaving. Do you know that Aisha Buhari was fingered in a corruption case involving Halliburton of USA? Do you know that Aisha Buhari cannot travel to the USA? Are you aware of that? There is an arrest warrant out for her. Are you aware of that? That is the one controlling your government in the zoo. After her, you will say is is a shibajo. Oh, let's leave them. Let's go to the cabal. Isa Funtu and all the rest of them. They are all criminals. The only reason why they want Nigeria together as one is because anybody can steal as much as they like and get away scot-free. That is why they're not in jail. Is this the type of country that any sensible person will go and give their life for in the army? I ask of you, all of you. Are you telling me that anybody with their senses together will wake up in the morning and say, I pledge to Nigeria my country, if you have conscience? Now you understand why I am as hard as I am on black people. You remember also on Radio Biafra when I called, I want to prove to some few elemental idiots that we are powerful. I'm not boasting. Do you know how powerful we are? It's about this news I'm about to tell you. That tells you how powerful IPOB is. This IPOB that I lead. It is a monster. And that is why the zoo is... That is when I tell you the zoo is finished, I find this year, I say with every authority, this year the zoo will fall. This year, 2020, the zoo must fall. This year that I buried my parents together on the 14th of February, this year the zoo is falling. Now listen. 356 soldiers... Tender their resignation in army massive exodus. Do you remember a few weeks ago I asked those serving in the army to resign? Do you remember it? If I tell you that the Nigerian army listened to Radio Biafra more than some people in Biafra land, will you believe me? Today are they not resigning from the army? Did I not tell them? You are serving corruption. The man you are serving under Buratai is missing. He is nowhere to be found and you can never see him again. Forget all the Photoshop, all the face marks. He is gone. Stole money and ran away with huge investments in the UAE. These are the people that you are fighting and dying for. In other words, if you are a soldier in the zoo, in the zoo army, and you are fighting and you are not full, honey, you are fighting one 
to defend corruption and two for your own conquest and i'll prove it later on as well now what is happening listen to this very news google it if you like no fewer than 356 soldiers in the northeast and other theaters of oppression have applied to the chief of army staff buratai for voluntary retirement citing loss of interest if they are not listening to radio biafra has this ever happened before okay people may say oh it just happened because of that but how come it never happened until i called for it because people can see the truth forget about all the petty nonsense people can look through and say that what ipob is doing is right what nam the kanu is preaching is correct now tell me you are in the army and you're fighting and in that army buhari that they never told you that he's dead they instead they brought in Abakiari to replace him and you're fighting and dying for these people you're fighting and dying for corruption so where did uh, Yusuf Buhari get all his money from to make him the fourth richest man in Africa these are the people you're fighting and dying for let's say oh Usubajo is there he's a good man the same Usubajo that stole a hundred billion is here now is that the one you're fighting and dying for okay let's forget all of this how about those of you that the Fulani Janjaweed, even those from Mali and from Mauritania, are in your village killing and raping your mothers? So you are fighting in the Nigerian army to preserve the unity of a country that will just go and send their people, their bandits, to sack your village and rape your mothers. Are you not a fool? Who will serve in such an army? Which sensible human being will serve? You are at the war front fighting in Bruno, claiming you're fighting Boko Haram in Bruno. The money given that the EU voted that US gave to fight uh, insurgency and terrorism, Buratai and his friends have shared all the money through Central Bank. And you're fighting and you're dying in the North. Meanwhile, not only that, not only that nothing is working, you have no electricity, you don't even know when you're going to get paid, you don't have the right equipment to prosecute this very war. Even to add insult on top of injury, the people are in your village raping your mom, but you're in the, you're wearing army uniform, claiming you're fighting for Nigeria, one Nigeria. I, I, I can't understand such mentality. I mean, which, who, which human being, you are in, in army fighting in the Northeast? Uh, and, uh, and they are in, uh, in uh, Benue, uh, you know, messing about with your sisters. Fighting. So I asked the soldiers, what are you fighting for? You cannot say you're fighting to keep Nigeria one, because it, to keep Nigeria means to keep corruption together. Only those who are corrupt will fight for Go and look at all of them fighting for one Nigeria. Look at all of them. They are all corrupt. They are either former politicians or current ones. All of them want to get their hand on the deal, to put their hand in the treasury, to become as rich as their, their thieving predecessor. That's all they want in life. What else do they want? They want nothing else. These are the people you're fighting for and dying for. I commend the 356 soldiers that are left. Everybody should leave and go back to their village. Hunger will not kill you. Every, if everybody in the army decides to go back to their village, it's over. Then people can now come together and decide what type of nation they wish to build. As simple as that. Go back to your villages the way you were before the white man came. And tell me if within six weeks your lives will not be different. That time you can sit down and plan, how do we bring water? How do we bring light? How do we bring our roads? Because you are now discussing things that affect you. Not you are in Bruno dying. They kill you, you're from Biafra. You're claiming you're fighting for Nigeria. And they kill you and they bury you in Medugri. Do we bury people abroad? I'm asking you, you that is fighting for the zoo, when you die, they bury you in Medugri. Is that where you're going to come in your next life? You're a Yoruba man. You're a Bini man. You are fighting in the zoo army. You are dying in, in, in Medugri and they bury you there in Yubi. Is that where you come from? Is that where you come from? Now, you understand, don't you? That is why they are afraid of us. And why would any sensible being will be afraid of IPOB? If you're not afraid, what else are you going to be afraid of? That is why they are planning to kill us. Even our own people, they claim they kill him. You will not kill a Fulani man who is in your village, taking your land by force, raping your mothers and cutting up your daughters into pieces. You don't understand that. And you can never understand it. 
because that is the blood that you have in you the blood of a threat or even your vice president is a thief nobody can do anything about it everybody is a rogue in the zoo everyone nigerian is a criminal look at all those defending one nigeria look at all of them and understand what is happening have you now forgotten even the they said the house of um, reps they now want to start a massive investigation to understand the reason why People are resigning from the army. They have resigned because they listen to their dear friend. They can see reason. Once you listen to us, your life can no longer be the same. It can no longer be the same. Not now, not tomorrow, not ever. That is why we are doing what we are doing. That heaven may bear us witness. We are unstoppable. 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 People are resigning in the army today. Why didn't they resign before I, I asked them to resign from the army? Why didn't they do it before? Why not? It's a very simple question. You're fighting Boko Haram and the Boko Haram is in your village. <laughs> Being, uh, as you're fighting them, they're putting them in the army and sending them to your village to, to rape your mothers and to kill your sisters. And you're telling me that um, sometimes they'll take them and disappear for life. And you're telling me you're in the Nigerian army. Keep deceiving yourselves. Um, I, I commend those that have resigned and I'm asking more people to leave that useless zoological army. All you defend is corruption. All you defend is evil. The more you serve them, the more your village is conquered. The more your village is conquered. Today, tomorrow, and forever. The more your village is conquered. Uh, uh, we shall show, show them very soon. <laughs> now, listen. It is not, I said it before, that the Fulanese came to conquer all of you. That even in the north, I told you in the north, in Hausa territories. It is a news today by Daily Post. Listen, you know, farmers' header clashes, that's what they call it. Fulani group demands 4% of Bauchi land. Now they know they are Fulani. They want to take the Hausa land in Bauchi. Hausa, have you seen the mistake your ancestors made? Now you're paying for it. The same thing that I'm saying to saboteurs in our land. The same mistakes you're making today, you are going to pay for very dearly in the future. If you want to know what your future will be like, those of you that say, oh, one Nigeria, let's make Nigeria one. I'm going to fight in the army of Nigeria. If you want to know what your life is going to be like, listen to this very news. Listen. As the administrative committee of inquiry set up by the Bauchi state government to look into land disputes in the state, starts to receive memoranda, Daku Pulaku Group, a conglomerate of Fulani social cultural associations in the state, has demanded 4% of the total land mass in Bauchi state. Now you know that when they tell you not, yeah, we are a is a, is a ruse, is a lie. It is Fulani at the top, the governors, the emirs, using the peasants, the house of poor people, to control the rest. Now, is it not very clear to all of you now, that the Fulanis are not from Bauchi. That Bauchi is not a Fulani land. So when you condemn the whole of the North together, remember this, that even in Bauchi, Fulani want to take their land as well. Now tell me who is the one Nigerian? Who wants to belong to an idiotic place like this? Tell me that very person. Show me that person. Show me that very person. This is one thing that the Janjaweed will never tell you. This is what the only reason why Yoruba is still part of one Nigeria is because 49% of Yoruba people are Muslims. And the supreme leader of Muslims in Nigeria is the Sultan of understand this sequence very is very, very easy to understand. Who is the supreme leader of Muslims in Nigeria? It is the Sultan of Sokoto. And you know, in Africa, people value religion more than their own life. Who do you think a Yoruba Muslim will listen to? I'm asking you, who do you think a Yoruba Muslim will listen to? Where do you think his allegiance will lie? We'll always lie with Sokoto now. Don't you know that? As, uh, as I told you, Bauchi is crying. Bauchi is crying today. But when we now want to generalize, we say, oh, the whole of the North, North, North. No, call them by their name. Fulane Janjaweed. They are the terrorists, not the Hausa people. No, Maybe a few Hausas they brainwashed. So, 
<laughs> That's why they have to be afraid of IP. Oh my goodness. They must be. They have to be. They have to be. I'm not a, a, a Bauchi, Bauchi, they, they want to take their land from Bauchi. So now you know why I say everybody must go back to where they come from. No, no, Blaga, Laga, China, Akoya, go back to where you come from. Fulani, go to your village. House, I go to your village. Everybody, go to your villages. Go back to where you come from and begin to plan from the grassroots to make the lives of your people better. Because this whole one Nigeria experimental garbage from Britain is not working and can never work. Not now, not tomorrow, not ever. Listen to another group in Kogi. We are no longer safe in Kogi group cries out over growing security everywhere is not secure nobody is and you can never be because now the Fulanis are in a hurry their men strike force two of them their first 11 was led by the dead buhari he's gone second 11 led by abakiari he's gone now there is nobody and they're in a hurry and if you go to kogi some of us say, well, one, one, we want one nigeria let nigeria be one do you know who raised the alarm? Is one uh, his name is uh, Idris of uh, Moraina. <laughs> Idris <laughs> from Kogi. <laughs> Idris of uh, Moraina. He called on the governor of the state to change tactics in handling security issues as citizens in Kogi state can no longer sleep with their two eyes closed. His name is Idris. They gave him an Arabic name, a Janjaweed name. He's a proud Muslim. But that did not stop the Fulanis from consuming him. Being a Muslim is a recipe for consumption. They will consume you. The same thing they did to Yorubas in Kwara State. The same thing they are planning to do in Ebonya. We said, no, it cannot happen. One day I'll release all the videos so you will see it. So you not think I'm just saying it. I have all the videos. Work we had fantastic job we are doing in a Boeing state, and they know it very well. This was from Kogi. One Nigeria, one Nigeria, but you cannot sleep with your two eyes closed. Who are the people causing the problems? They are the ones stealing billions upon billions upon billions from the treasury in Abuja. I can see that some people are busy responding to fools on my page. These are computer-generated names. They don't exist. That's what they do. They bribe Facebook and they use them. It's preset to be churning out all this. And you're busy wasting your time responding to fools who don't exist. I feel sorry for you. You shouldn't. People are dying in Kogi State. Who are the ones killing them? Fulani Janjaweed. But they gave them, they said, Islam is good. Oh. Allah is great. Oh. Despite Allah is dead, still they cannot sleep at night. What does that tell you about the Zoological Republic? It tells you there is no hope. This is the type of people are people from Gogi, they are serving in the army. Oh. People from Bauchi are serving in the Nigerian army as general, as uh, platoon commanders, as brigade commanders, as tank commanders. Meanwhile, in their village, those they are serving are saying, uh, we are now laying claim to 4% of Bauchi, you give it to us. But you're busy in the army, defend, basically enabling your own conquest. Because if you're serving in the Nigerian army, you are enabling your own conquest. The same thing uh, that some of the Janjaweed uh, 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 father idiots are doing in Oba. That's what they're doing. No, it, it's, it's so sad. The House of Reps has resolved to investigate the alleged mass exodus of soldiers from the Nigerian army, warning that it will worsen the security crisis across the country. Of course, they know. Why wouldn't House of Reps investigate? They're investigating because they want the allowance to be coming in. For Nigeria to be one, that means their allowance is coming in. Their wives and their girlfriends are going shopping in Dubai, living it large, living in Ashokuru, living in Maitama, living in huge mansions. As you, they pay you 50,000, which is less than 100 pounds every, every month. That is what they pay you to go and be dying. That, let's investigate and put things in order. They know the zoo has crumbled. It can never recover. In this our age and time, in this age, history will call this period the age of IPOV. The age that IPOV brought enlightenment to not just our people, but to everybody concerned. And this is one thing that I find quite bizarre. 
I remember when people jumped around and wanted very desperately, even some of them, those that claim they want to kill Namdekano and IPUB leadership, they are the ones begging and pleading with the Fulani, who are the main sponsors of five terrorist groups, to declare IPUB a terrorist organization. But now, despite many groups calling for the designation of Fulani, Killers as terrorists, the government have said no. The corrupt face of the government, the mask wearing presidency of the zoo, they have said no. And it is the governor of Benue State, Samuel Otom, who is asking for Fulani headsmen to be declared a terrorist group. Not a Fulani man. No Fulani man will call. Never. They will never do it. But you will see an Igbo man calling for IPOB to be classified as a terrorist group. Whereas the idiot cannot call for Fulani headsmen raping his mother in the village to be classified as a terrorist group. Now, you know, when I tell you that uh, black people are demented, you can see where I'm coming from. Nobody can argue with that. The zoo is dead. The zoo is dead politically, militarily, and economically. As somebody pointed out, Fulani economics, which I analyzed on Radio Biafra a short while ago, somebody picked it up. Let me see if I can try and play this well, very person's voice now. so that you can understand it. He is trying to tell you how the Fulani is run government. For three years. Listen, listen very, very, I want you to listen to this because it is very, very important that some of you listen to this because if you don't listen to it, you will not understand what we are talking about. It won't make any sense to you, but now I'm going to play so you will understand it. I said it before, this is Fulani economics. People don't reason. All they know is to loot, to cheat, to deceive all of you. The same thing they did to house our people. House our people, we are so foolish, they fell for it. Look at where they are today. They even moved to Bauchi. Today they're asking for 4% of the land of Bauchi that doesn't belong to them. That is who they are. Because you want to be in one Nigeria, okay. Be in one Nigeria and this is what's going to happen to you. This is the economics of those who claim they're intellectuals. I want to play it for you so you will understand. So that the whole world will know the mess that people are in in the zoo. Listen. We have the situation now. Yes. A refinery. Yes. That has not functioned mm -hmm. for three years. Uh huh. It's paying salaries yeah. of every staff. The refinery has not functioned for three years. <laughs> but we have carried on with the salaries. Nobody can sack anybody. Can you listen? Why is that? People are getting promoted. Uh huh. Because the refinery is not functioning. The refinery is not working. But people are getting paid. With your pension, gratuity, life insurance, health insurance. I have never, I have never seen such economics in my life. In this period of COVID, all the economy is upside down. People are being followed. People are being, I mean, followed means to put into follow, please. Not followed, followed. People are being taken out of work. People are being made redundant because their company can no longer produce the goods and services that people want to buy. Now, the reverse is the case in the zoo. That is why every, when I think about Nigeria, everything is upside down. That even common sense is upside down in the zoo. You see somebody you think can reason properly. They can never ever reason properly. Why that is the case, I have no idea. Now, look at the fine crude oil four of them they're not working but every year they employ people they retire people and they're paying them those they retire they pay gratuity and they pay pension to those they're taking in they pay wages and salary to yet they produce nothing what type of economy is that tell me who can survive within such an economy if not fools this is what we call Nigeria is zoo. Only animals can operate such an economic system where an institution that is completely hopeless is hemorrhaging money every blessed day is there being supported by the government. And you're telling me that people are normal in such a place? You're telling me to have regard for zoo people? I think you must be dreaming. That is what is happening in the zoo. Even uh, Osibajo, who is a pastor, he's a pastor, mind you, is also a thief. Even the vice president who is supposed to be 
a PhD holder, a legal luminary. I believe he's also a senior advocate of a senior advocate who should be, should I say, have respect for the law, is busy stealing because he is vice president in the zoo. That is why no matter who you put in, no matter who you put in, the outcome will always be the same. Isn't it very funny? Let me tell you, considering the type of economics they run, considering the fact that some people are serving in the army when in actual fact their village is under occupation and being taken over by marauding terrorists and bandits. Why is it not shocking to all of you that you claim you have a president, you can never see him live in a democracy where it is the rule of the people for the people and for the rule of um, the people by the people and for the people. You can never see him. He can never address you live. He's always, oh, he said this. The only reason being that they are so ashamed of themselves. They are so foolish that all they now need to do is to defend their ignorance and their stupidity out of shame. Out of shame. But we are here to expose them and we are going to continue to expose them. We are not going to allow them to rest. Never, ever, ever. Not now, not tomorrow, not ever. So that they may know that as long as we are here, as long as we exist, there is no way, no way that we are going to relent. The zoo has crumbled and it must crumble. It doesn't matter what they do. It doesn't matter how they do it. It doesn't matter how they intend to do it. The zoo can never, ever stand. Not today, not tomorrow, not ever. I promised you that some of you who are lucky enough, I may be able to get hold of you to be able to speak. I may be able to get hold of you to speak very briefly on air, some of you, if you have anything important to say. But right here on this very platform, the reason why I had to come out to do this very broadcast is because of the people who are in Oba. The people that decided that attacking our mothers is the best way they can prove themselves to the Ajanja with masters. They have failed very woefully. They have failed before. They have failed now and they will continue to fail. It is as simple as that. What we are doing and will continue to do is to expose everything that is wrong with the zoo. And absolutely everything that is wrong with the zoological republic. So if you know those planning how there is going to be their turn to steal because they are, when people are campaigning for elective offices in the zoo who are their role models they are looking at those who have stolen in the past they are looking at those who will continue to steal and that is their inspiration i have somebody on the line please give me your name and where you're calling from i did say i was going to speak to some of you and here you are please go ahead um your name is what? Isoma. Yes. I'm calling from France. Please go ahead. Yes. Um. So I just want to um, say something. Something concerning the this issue about the Oba. My mind is just telling me that you know there are lots of people on social media going about talking about about your name. You know I don't want to call their names now because it's not um um go to give them a publicity you know this might be um saboteurs this might be their plan to plan to destroy um ipub meeting in our balance it might be a set up so that that's what so we should all be, um, be very careful and all ipub members should be um very watchful because these people they are really at they are saboteurs of, of course they are and thank you very much my dear sister for 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 that of course we know who they are and they can never succeed not now not tomorrow not ever the caller on the line can you hear me your name and where you're calling from for the last time the caller on... yes good evening where you calling from my name is kisiro i'm calling you from morocco from morocco what for 
Go ahead. It's very sad. I'm very happy. I'm very happy. Remember something that another person, my own family did not do for me. You did it. God, we are struggling behind you. No matter anything, let me do. Keep it on. Thank if you. If you forget what you are doing, we are going to die. Please, my leader, oh God. You are blessed. I'm spent. We are going home. Nobody is going to stop us. There is no Jupiter that will stop us tomorrow. Not every authority. No, they will try to fight a million times because we are unstoppable. Absolutely unstoppable. Who is going to stop us? I won't be an idiot. They call me, please, your name and where you're calling from, if you may. Can you hear me? No. Can you hear me? The caller on the line, can you hear me? Yes. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Your name and where you're calling from? I'm calling from Italy. My name is Akujo Binjoko from Mbise. I'm living here in Italy. Please go ahead. Oh, my dear kid, this is my first time to get you online. I was very, very happy a lot because this sufferness you are suffering. Is it of course? You say, you say, you say, for all over the world, our people die in prison, die in the Mediterranean Sea, die in the desert. Now, God has revealed you to come and rescue our pen. And any man who says strongly can never be. As in the Metuqua Kigabia must try that person down. You see? All of us will die if Biafra doesn't come. All of us will die. I thank you, my leader. I thank you, Mazuche Mefo. I thank the people all over the world. I say that we shall go home. You see? Nobody can stop us. You see? Because we have suffered a lot. You see? We can continue until we use our last blood to be a strain for that. Because five million. People die in Biafra land. It's not an easy task. So therefore, anybody who tries this group, I think it's in a no work. We are ready, my Nandekalo. Anything you are doing, continue going. And it's okay. So they are following you. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Nothing for that. There is nothing anybody can do to stop us. Absolutely nothing. Not today, not tomorrow, not ever. Thank you, my dear brother, for calling. Thank you very, very, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. We are live and we are direct. And on sabotage or the other, so to speak, uh, they have all failed. I can assure them that they have failed and they will fail. There is nothing they can do about it. Absolutely nothing because we are unstoppable. Ever as we keep it, we are alive and we are direct. 
get to the top of the app and to manage the app. Stop. 